Hey everyone, Dan with Mac Rumors, and in this video, we're going to go over some of the parental controls associated with iOS 12's new screen time feature. Not too long ago, we went over the basic ins and outs of Apple's screen time features in the settings menu. It's a great way to see your usage habits and ultimately figure out what areas of your usage you can cut back on to improve your digital health. Now, if you have kids who might have received their first iPhone or younger kids with iPads, parents will absolutely love the ability to see how their kids are spending their time on their iPhones or iPads and the ability to limit apps, set downtime and block websites, music and movies so your kids have access to only the specific content that you want them to. For starters, the top of the screen time home screen will have all of the listed devices that's within your family sharing that have screen time turned on. Tapping on the device will show you all the statistics about that person's phone usage, like most used applications, notifications, and how many times they pick up their phones. This can serve as a blueprint for parents to ultimately decide exactly how much their child should be allowed to use certain applications and when is a good time to schedule some downtime for them. Speaking of scheduling downtime, you can do this by simply heading into the downtime setting menu and selecting the start and end time and whether or not you would like to block the device during the downtime or not. If you choose to block the device during downtime, all the applications will be grayed out with an hourglass symbol next to the application name. If you try to open the app, the device will alert the user stating that the time limit has been reached and can ask for more time by entering in the screen time passcode that was presumably set by the parents. If you enter the screen time password, you can then approve the app for an additional 15 minutes, one hour, or the rest of the day. App Limits functions in a similar manner, but is regulated on usage time of certain applications as opposed to a scheduled downtime. If you believe your child spends a lot of time on entertainment apps or social media applications, after the allotted time is reached, the apps will be grayed out and permission will now need to be granted in order to use the applications. Do keep in mind that time limits do reset every night at midnight. If you use downtime and or app limits for your child, but are worried that they will be locked out of important applications that they might need at any given time, you can determine which apps are always allowed, like your phone, messages, and in this example, I use the Nest application as an always allowed app so that my child can have access to some of the smart home tech, like the front door lock whenever they need it. Finally, content restrictions can be an amazingly useful tool for parents who might be worried about the type of content he or she might find on the internet. If you head into the content restrictions subcategory, you'll find a bunch of settings to help monitor store content, web content, Siri, and Game Center. So for example, if you don't want your child to listen to music with lots of profanity, you can select the type of music that they will be able to find in the iTunes store and in Apple Music. By turning this setting to clean, you can see that when I try to play a song that has an explicit icon attached to it, the song is grayed out and brings up a prompt alerting you that you will need to change your content restrictions in order to play this song. With movies, you can set the rating, and as you can see here, the only movie available to me currently would be The Internship, which has a PG-13 rating, but if I set it to PG in the content restrictions, this movie now disappears. With web content, by selecting Allowed Websites Only, your device will pre-populate a handful of allowed websites that are suitable to view on your device. Now, most of these are children websites, but you can actually customize exactly what website you'd like them to have access to. If you go to a website not on the list, the site will not load and you will be alerted that it has been blocked. So these are just a few things that parents can do with the new screen time feature in iOS 12, and it will be interesting to see how Apple will approve upon this in the years to come. Let us know your thoughts on the parental controls for screen time in the comments down below. This has been Dan with MacRumors. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.